Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to be making a bastard sword or a hand and a half sword using no booleans. So if you saw the challenge video for this on Wednesday, essentially I said that we we're going to be making this sword and we're going to be making it without using any booleans, just techniques that you can use from standard blender. Okay, so no add-ons either. And if you wanted to, you obviously had a chance to try and do this beforehand and see if you do it in a similar way to what I do. And I'm not going to say that the way I'm doing it is better. It just is a way that works. You might find something more efficient. And if you have, please do say so in the comments. I think it'd be really interested to hear what people say. But essentially, we're doing this without Booleans because while Booleans are great, they have a lot of positives like you can then manipulate them afterwards. If you're on a relatively slow computer, then this can cause a problem, especially if you're using lots of them. And when you start joining things together, this can cause errors that you're going to have to fix and sometimes they can be more annoying and take longer than actually just doing it without the booleans in the first place. So if you haven't seen that video and you want to take part in trying to make this beforehand then I've got a link up in the top right hand corner to take you to that video so you can watch it and it goes through all the important bits that you're trying to copy and you can have a go at that and then come back to watch this or you can just totally ignore that and just take this as a learning opportunity. So let's get straight into this. I'm going to keep this to the side and I'm just going to put that lengthways up so that it's easier to model and we're going to start off with shift and a and we're going to bring in a cube so i'm just going to press g and z to move that up slightly and i want this bit to be slightly elongated the bit that's going to cover the blade so i'm just going to press s to scale it on the y-axis and scale that out a little bit now this probably isn't going to end up the same size i'll try to keep it relatively close for example, I'm going to actually shrink that down a little bit on the y-axis to keep it relatively similar in size. But importantly, I haven't done the thing that I always say to do, which is to apply the scale. And actually, that's going to be very important for something that we do later. So I'm not applying the scale quite intentionally. What I am going to do, however, and this is entirely optional, you could easily do it without this, is I am going to apply a modifier, which is going to be a mirror modifier. I want this mirrored on the y-axis and on the x-axis. So anything I change on one side will be changed on the other. And let's get straight into this. I'm gonna to go to face mode and we're gonna make the cross guard here. And you'll notice that this dips in slightly. So we're gonna start with that. So I'm just gonna press E to extrude that out. And you'll notice because of the mirror modifier it's doing on both sides. I'm gonna press S to scale it in and I only want it scaled on the x-axis. So something like that. And then we're going to extrude this out a little bit more. So E to get that to approximately the same length. And then I'm going to control an R to put an edge loop there halfway. And then I'm going to select this edge here and G and Z that up. So we're looking about right at this point, but we need to round everything off. So I'm going to press Alt to select that edge loop. In fact, let's do this one first. So I'm going to press Control and B to bevel it. And let's do something like eight steps for that to make it nice and smooth. And then we're going to do the same for this one, except for I'm probably going to up that to about 16. Again, to keep it nice and smooth. And now I've got this similar shape going on. Right, next up, blade. So let's come in here, and at this point, I think I'm pretty much done with the mirror modifier. I don't think I need that anymore. So I'm just going to apply that, and now we've got access to all our geometry. Now, this has caused a slight annoyance of things overlapping here. So what I'm going to do is press A and M, merge by distance, and that is going to sort that out. So we've now got no overlap that you could just slightly see there. So let's get straight on with the blade. So I just need to inset that slightly. So we've got a little bit of gap between the blade and the outer edge, especially on this point, that's really important. Press Ctrl and R to put an edge loop in the center, and we're going to turn this into our diamond section by going into vertex mode, selecting those, M, and we're going to do those at center. And then we're going to do the same for these two over there. So just so I don't have this edge in the middle being annoying, I am actually going to go here, select this edge. And I'm going to press Ctrl and X to dissolve that out. So we now have one solid face and I'm going to extrude that up. So E to extrude all the way up to about there. And importantly, because of what we want to do with our fuller, in fact, actually, I'll do that a little bit later. So let's G and Z that the rest way up. And then I'm going to start working on this curved section here. So to do that, I'm going to extrude that up somewhere around there. And to make this curve section, what I'm going to do is come in, Control and R, 
bring that up so we've got lots of different edges so we can make it nice and smooth lots of different edge loops i should say click and escape and now go into vertex mode and we're just going to select these top points there and what we're going to do is we're just going to scale these in but importantly we're going to use proportional editing so that this affects all of the other vertices and that's up here and we want this to be not smooth we want it sharp so it's going to have a sharp point to it so i'm going to press s start scaling that in and you'll notice we've got my proportional editing circle i can move that bigger or smaller to affect more or less vertices now i'm just going to come in to side on view to make that a little bit easier so s i'm going to move my proportional editing so it's affecting everything but the bottom ones and you'll notice we've got a slight issue here in that it's trying to scale everything on every axis and you'll notice that it's towards the tip of the blade it's bringing all of these edge loops closer together and we don't want that so i'm going to press shift and z and that means that now it's affecting it on all axes except for the z axis i'm going to bring those nice and close together click and then just to get those perfectly together i'm going to press m and merge at center and let's look at that side on and just because it's not quite smooth i'm going to press g and z with proportional editing off so g and z and raise that just a little bit and then we've got this nice smooth curve to it okay let's get this bevel done so edge mode now you'll notice if i did this now because we're going to use a bevel this would do it all the way to the top and we'd have a bit of an issue interfering with all of these and also we don't want it all the way top we want it somewhere down here so what i'm going to do is press ctrl and r bring an edge loop and bring it to about there and this is going to confine this bevel that's going to make the fuller so what i'm going to do is select this edge select the edge on the other side with shift and i'm going to go and look at the cross guard this is going to make it easier to judge what's going on Control and b we've got this bevel there i don't want it too wide something like that and obviously this is just smoothing out the blade at the moment but we can change this by pressing p and that allows us to activate the profile and now i can move my mouse to make the profile of my fuller and obviously if we go too far this is basically a perfect square inward which you might like i want this nice and smooth so i'm going to go somewhere around there now we've got go into object mode this nice clean fuller until we get here it's not looking quite right so vertex mode i think i'm gonna bring these two up so g and z just a little bit more and then we want to make this nice and rounded if we have a look at my one here we've got this nice smooth curve to it and we're just going to do that by pressing alt selecting the edge loop and then i'm going to press ctrl and b and you'll notice this looks like a bit of a mess because the profile is still beveling inwards so i'm going to go somewhere about there press p and then i can move my profile back to this rounded shape to make it slightly convex now we've got a nice smooth fuller easy right on to what might be the hardest bit if you don't know this trick and that is the handle and the grip now i've already decided i don't quite like this i actually think that there should be one of these rings there to separate the grip from the cross guard so i'm actually going to do this slightly differently but essentially i'm just adding in a stage I'm going to go into edge mode and importantly I'm going to select each of these edges and we're going to subdivide it. So edge, subdivide and let's put the number of cuts up so we've got something like this. And the bit that I'm looking out for here is the amount of space around the edge. So probably somewhere like that, maybe like this, should be fine. Now at this point I want to go into face mode. I want to select all of these internal faces there bar the one on the outside i'm going to press f to turn this into one face and now this is the bit that you might not have been aware of i'm going to go to mesh transform and i want to transform this to a sphere now you can use shift alt and s for this so you don't have to do this coming up here okay so you can just shift alt and s but it's good to know where the option is and if i drag to the side you'll notice this is turning it into a sphere but i would say this isn't quite as smooth as it could be but i could always have subdivided this again if i wanted to that will probably do me fine now the bit that's very important about this is obviously this has not turned it into a sphere it's more this oval shape and the reason for that if i bring out my m panel and bring up if i go into object mode my information that's because 
of the scaling we did earlier. If you remember right at the beginning, we scaled this cube on the y-axis, and that is what is deforming this shape to mean that it has a slightly oval shape. Essentially, this is 1.6 compared to this being 1. And most handles on swords generally do have this relatively oval shape. It makes it more comfortable in the hand. Okay, we don't like gripping perfect circles. Also, if you're not looking at the blade, it's quite useful because you can feel the correct way for it to be. So we want this. It's pretty accurate. So as I said, I'm going to put in one of these loops here. So in fact, I might do two. Hmm. Let's have a look at see how it looks. So I'm going to press E to extrude that out. I'm going to press I to inset that a bit. So this is going to be where the handle is, and I'm going to extrude that down a little bit. Okay, well, let's deal with these loops to begin with. So I want to control and R to put an edge loop in there, control and B to just make a little gap, and I want to turn the segments down to just being one. So just a little gap. And then I'm going to press T to get out my side menu. Don't know why I didn't have that all the time on, but you don't really need it most of the time. But for this one, to extrude and to extrude along normals, you do. And I'm just going to select that and put it in a bit something like that and i'm just going to come off of that alt select that edge shift that edge shift alt that edge shift and b and let's bevel that in somewhere around there and we've got that slight curve so that looks quite nice now, now let's deal with this because we want to have this pommel at the bottom uh, in fact, I've probably gone a little bit too long on the handle, but with those loops, I think that probably looks about right. So let's deal with this. But you'll notice when we get down to the bottom of this blade, this is actually circular. So I need to fix this. I need to make this circular. And actually, that's not difficult. Now that I've done this bit, I can just press Control and A, apply the scale, face, and go back to this face. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to go to Mesh, Transform, to Sphere, but now it's going to want to transform it to a perfect sphere because the scale is equal on all sides. So now I've got this nice oval shape that gradually turns into this perfect circle. Now, most swords aren't exactly like this in terms of their handle. You'll notice this, we've got it slightly flaring out and then coming back in. So let's deal with that. I'm just going to press Ctrl and R. And effectively, I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the tip of the blade. We're going to use proportional editing to sort this out. But importantly, it's these edge loops that are going to become the leather wraps on the sword. So here, for example, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we can do the same here. We could do more or less. It depends how big you want everything to be. Okay, but I'm going to do it the same. So I've got nine, escape. And then I'm going to come into proportional editing turn that to smooth and just select the middle one with alt scale that and you'll notice again we've got the same problem that it's trying to scale everything on the z axis as well so shift and z i'm going to use my mouse wheel to bring that down to something like there essentially wherever you're happy with it now let's just deal with the bits at the bottom because that'll be relatively quick so face mode let's e that down to somewhere about there maybe that was too far actually no probably all right and then I'm going to shift and Z to go into x-ray mode, select those, and we're going to use our extrude on normals to bring that a little bit wider again, something like that. And usually that gives us this nice little inset, which is exactly what we want, or looks like an inset, essentially we're extruded the faces out. And we're going to do exactly the same that we did up here. So control and R, control and B, take that down to one, so we've got this nice thin little bevel, and then go into face mode, and I'm gonna just extrude those in along the normals, something like that, and then edge mode, alt select that edge, shift and alt that edge, shift and alt that edge, shift and alt that edge, and let's control and B, and bevel that. I'm just gonna up those segments to make it nice and smooth. So we've got our loops on the bottom. Mm, these are a little bit thinner on those and actually I would say compared to those they're a little bit wide so let's just vertex mode select all those G and Z that up a little bit oh again proportional editing off G and Z to make that one a little bit thinner and then G and Z to make that one a little bit thinner okay happy with that and then we've got finally this flared out pommel 
So let's just extrude that out a bit. S to scale it, somewhere like that. And then all I'm gonna do for this, because again, we can just use our proportional editing, but we need the vertices on it. I'm gonna inset this right to the middle to make it nice and small. Oh, that's causing some problems on a couple of these edges. I'm just gonna control and Z to go back a bit. That is interesting. Either way, easy to fix. Let's alt select that. Oops, sorry, just the edge. Alt select that, control and X to dissolve it out. Let's have a look if there's any other ones. There's not on there. Hmm. Oh, it's because these have joined together. Okay, so that's fine. It's not too much of an issue. Let's have a look for some other ones. There's one there. Let's get rid of that. Ah, Blender. You always try to cause us some little challenges so we learn. Either way, that's fine. So let's go to face mode. I to inset that. Somewhere around there. And then all we're going to do is I'm going to press C to go into circle mode. In fact, I need to select one of these edges first. C, select all those. And so that we can make this nice rounded pommel at the bottom, we're going to subdivide this. So edge and subdivide. And I'm just going to up that something like that. And then face, select that. We want this to be rounded at the bottom. So I'm going to go to sphere and I'm going to come to the side, G and Z, shrink that in and get to the point where it just catches everything that we want. So something about there. And actually we do want, you'll notice this is a bit straight. We want this rounded, oops, we want this rounded shape. So control and R there. S to scale it in without proportional editing on. I always do that. And then control and B. And let's up that to make it nice and smooth. And then we've got our rounded pommel. So nearly there. Last bit is this leather wrap. And actually this is surprisingly simple. All we do is we're just gonna select all of these edges. So Alt and then Alt Shift. Now that we've got all of those, I'm gonna press control and B and just put in a single bevel. So I'm taking the segments down and I want to make this really thin so it's just visible. And then all I'm going to do is Alt select the top of each of these pairs. And then I'm going to scale that out. But again, we've got this problem. We don't want it moving on the Z axis and something like that. Now, this is going to depend on how exaggerated you want this. I'm using this for some sort of miniatures, so therefore you need the details to be slightly exaggerated so they're visible. So I'm going to go for something like that. And I'm actually going to try and make these so that they line up with the bit below. So G and Z, I'm just going to move that down slightly to around there. So it looks like this bit of leather is going over the top of the bit of leather that would be below it. Okay, and that's why you've got this slight raised area, which is pretty true of how you'd wrap a grip. It wouldn't be this exaggerated and obvious, but that's what we need to do. Then I'm gonna select the inner loops again. And then all I need to do is to shear this. And you can do that by either pressing Control, Shift, Alt and S, and then you can start to shear it. And you'll notice it doesn't like this. And if I press Y, it will shear it in now the way that we want. Or the other way I can do this is if I come to my options at the side and go down to here, We've got shear and actually brings up this nice useful tool that we can see and I want to go that way. To be honest, it's one of the few instances where I actually prefer the tool than the shock. And if I go back into object mode, we've got our leather wrap, this nice angle, which looks a little bit more realistic and you can shear that as much as you want. So at this point, we're pretty much done. We've got our sword. Matching our original one, just with this slight extra bit of having these couple of extra loops on the grip. So please do let me know in the comment section what you thought of this. Did you like this format? Did you take part? Did you do anything in a different way? Is this just a waste of time and you're not going to ever try this as a sort of thing to practice? You just want to see how I do it? Uh, in which case, do say, okay, this is a, a channel for you guys. And if it's not going to be useful for you, then there's no point in me doing it this way. But I thought it was a little bit of fun. And we could do some other challenges with different shapes in the future. I've already got one in mind, but again, doesn't need to be a challenge. I could just be doing it as a tutorial. I just thought it was quite nice for people to know in advance what we're doing and potentially have a go themselves.